In this example, we uh, show how to design a uh, crank slider mechanism. Many applications require a mechanism with a reciprocating linear sliding motion, such as engines, a compressor, a swing machine, reciprocating saws, and uh, etc. The crank slider uh, is a candidate for such applications and being uh, used a lot in the different mechanisms. Slider moves to a precise distance uh, called a stroke uh, and the cranks continuously rotate. Uh, usually crank is coupled uh, to the uh, motor uh, or a rotating device uh, and a slider is back and forth on the stroke. We have two types of the crank slider. One of them is the inline slider, uh, crank slider shown in the uh, top picture uh, and it produces symmetrical rec reciprocating motions. This type of crank slider used in the different type of the mechanisms such as engines and compressors. In the offset crank slider, the average speed of the forward and return is different. Uh, such as uh, machines uh, in the cutting uh, processes or uh, some of the mechanism being used in the packaging lines for uh, moving the parts. This type of the crank slider called quick return and a measure of that action is called time ratio which is the ratio of the time of the slower stroke to the time of the quicker stroke and shown by the Q. As you can see uh, since the time of the slower stroke is longer than the uh, faster stroke, uh, the uh, Q is always is larger than 1. An imbalance angle beta is a property relates the time ratio to the geometry of the linkage. And this is called imbalanced angle. An imbalanced angle beta is equal to 180 degree times Q minus 1 divided by Q plus 1, and the Q is the time ratio of the mechanism. Now we want to design a crank slider uh, with a quick return uh, action uh, with a time ratio of the 1.4 and a stroke of the 10 cm. And finally, we want to draw this mechanism when the crank is at its 60 degree position. The first step is to find out the imbalance angle. Beta is equal to the 180 degree times Q minus 1 divided by Q plus 1. And since the time ratio Q is equal to the 1.4, the beta uh, or the imbalance angle is equal to the 30 degree. Next is to locate the axis of the pin joint C. The pin joint C are moving uh, over the axis uh, of the stroke. So we can uh, draw uh, the stroke line and determine the extreme position of the stroke uh, and we call them C1 and C2. So the line shown in the picture, uh, C1, C2 is 10 cm uh, and uh, showing the extreme position uh, of the slider. The next step is at C1 or C2, we draw a line at any uh, angle that uh, we want and we call it theta m. So we draw a line at C1 here uh, and uh, with, uh, uh, with the angle of the theta m. Then at the C2, we draw another uh, line with the angle of the theta m where theta m is equal to the theta m minus beta. So in this step, we measure theta m, the previous line, the angle of the previous line that we have drawn, and uh, we uh, find the uh, value of the theta m, which is theta m minus 30 degree, which is the uh, beta, uh, the imbalance angle. These two lines intersect each other at the point, and this is our pivot point of the uh, crank slider mechanism, and we call it A. The next step is to find out the crank length, L2. L2 is equal to the half of the AC2 minus AC1. Uh, and the uh, next step is to find the length of the coupler, which is L3, which is equal to the uh, length of AC1 plus L2. And we can find all these dimensions, AC1, AC2, uh, the, by measuring uh, our uh, designed mechanism. 
so basically now we have all the uh, requirements uh, to uh, of the all, all the information and dimension required uh, for this mechanism the other thing which is very important here uh, is uh, since uh, the theta m uh, was uh, the, an angle uh, that we decided uh, and we can decide any other angle uh, we can have infinite number of the uh, solution for this uh, crank slider mechanism the final step is to draw the mechanism uh, at the uh, angle uh, crank angle uh, of the 60 degree from the pivot point a we draw a line uh, with the length of the crank l2 at the angle of the 60 degree then we draw an arc uh, with the, uh, at the center uh, which is located at the end of the crank line uh, with the radius of the coupler which is L3 this arc is going to intersect uh, the line C1 C2 and that's the point of the C uh, which uh, basically moving along the um, crank uh, along the axis of the stroke this is our mechanism at the uh, six uh, at the crank uh, uh, which is located at the 60 degree